What's up everybody, Morgan here. Today I'm going out and doing some night fishing at Strawberry Reservoir in Utah. Um, today, the purpose of this video is to go over how to attack a new body of water, how to go find fish in a reservoir you've never been to or maybe you haven't been to this year. Uh, I personally haven't been out to Strawberry at all this year. We're gonna go out there, uh, show you some tips and tricks on how to locate fish on new bodies of water, how to cycle through different baits, uh, and things like that. So uh, stick around and hopefully we have a good night out there. Got him. Yep. Got him. Johnny, you've got one on the dead stick. Lighten him up, son. All right, so uh, we made it out to the lake just before sunset. Uh, so to go over some of the stuff that I did to select where we're going on the lake, like I said, I haven't been out here this year. Um, one of the best resources you can use to learn about new waters is Facebook groups, things like that. Most states have like a Facebook group for ice fishing. Uh, so what I had done here is I got on that Facebook group, looked up what people had been doing out at the Strawberry. This location I had seen at this access point that people have been catching fish as opposed to some locations where the reports looked a little slower so you know I know there's fish in the area people have been doing good so we selected here um, also when I'm looking at those reports you know I had seen that people were catching fish anywhere from 20 to 40 feet of water so that tells me right there that I need to start looking at the the mapping on my fish finding unit kind of find locations that fit that bill um, so we're gonna be focusing on 20 to 40 feet what we'll probably do is drill out at 25 or so maybe even 30 and then if we're not marking fish and catching fish going deeper and shallower from there if you don't have a fish finder with mapping on it you can always Google at home you know depth map for such and such lake right this is strawberry reservoir so you can search that it's going to pull up a depth chart they're not going to be completely accurate all the time because uh you know these are reservoirs out here where they're draining water so you know it may say it's normally 80 feet deep somewhere and it's really not that given the current conditions because they drained a lot of water out of it but it at least give you an idea of the depth changes in the makeup of the lake so those are a couple tips you can use to kind of take that information you learn to where people are catching fish, what depths, kind of make an educated guess before you get out there on where that's gonna be at the lake. So before we start fishing, I wanted to show something else that you can look at, especially if you don't have a fish finder. But even if you do, as you're making your game plan, look at the surrounding topography and where you're fishing um, because the topography around the lake is gonna kind of tell you a little bit about what's going on on the bottom. I'll show you what you mean, what I mean. If you look that way, you'll see it's a relatively gradual slope right there. Pretty gradual. If I look at that side, it's a lot steeper of a bank as opposed to that side. What that tells me is the bottom of the lake is going to be doing roughly the same thing, right? That gradual slope over there probably continues a gradual slope out. It probably doesn't hit the water and then just drops straight off, right? So I know just by looking at that landscape, probably gonna have a nice gradual slope going to deeper water. Whereas over here, it's a lot steeper and I'm probably gonna get more of that drop off. All right, so we went and we just posted up on that steeper wall, like I said. It did exactly what I thought it would. It dropped from like 16 feet to 35 feet. We only marked a couple fish. Fished it for like 15 minutes and we didn't set everything up so that we could be mobile. I don't really want to set up a whole nighttime thing if we're not marking a ton of fish. So we're going to move before it gets too dark and hopefully we can mark some fish in our next area. We're just going to head further out a little bit further from where crowds would normally be out to a main lake point. Um, you know, we're kind of in a little bay. Hopefully that main lake point, we get some more fish cruising by. So Johnny and I got out here, we moved out to that main lake point, we set up, well we drilled some holes, we were marking some fish, so we uh, decided to set up, Johnny immediately caught a sweet one, I'll put a picture of that in, 
and I suck and I've missed five in a row. <laughs> Fishing in like 35 feet of water, we've had eats at basically the entire water column. I think I'm getting tapped right now by a fish. I don't know how I'm missing them. I don't know if the hook on this freaking jig head just sucks. I've never fished with this jig head before, so. I'm blaming the jig head. Okay, he's looking up at my other bait now. Oh, dude, he's just going crazy down there for my stuff. He just can't pick what oh, thing he is. wants. Yep. Got him. Nice. He's not very big. He's not big at all. I'm going to laugh when I've been fishing at Chubbs, dude. Oh, I think he's taking drag. Oh. Let me step down here. Yeah. There he is. Woo! Boom! Nice! Got him, dude. My drag was set super light. Ha ha ha! Sucka! Okay, calm down, my dude. Catch. Not as big as Johnny's. I just can't compare to patching, dude. Nice. Cuddy. There's a fish. I can hook him. Oh my gosh. And dude, it's like light and day on the fish we're marking on the fish finder, right, Johnny? Like, yeah. Like, we weren't marking well, anything. Yeah, like, it's made a massive difference yeah so you know like haven't been out here at all haven't fished out here um at all, all year that was kind of how we went about it you know drilled some holes at different depths and saw what we could do and weren't marking anything didn't want to set up the tent and uh until we started marking fish i've got a fish on my bait right now Got him. Big one. Nice. Will you pull that transducer cable out? Yep. Like that's a good one. Thanks, dude. Woo! Nice. Boom. Nice okay, we gotta get a photo of that guy. Sweet! And he ate. That paddle bug. Yep. Right there. Paddle bug. Oh shoot. He is feisty. That, uh, UV glow? Boom. Yeah. So now we might maybe look at going to some other glow stuff. You know, it seems to be something that's outproducing everything else, so we're gonna maybe look at switching some stuff over. Johnny just got one on the dead stick. Lighten them up, son! Woo! Dude, he is... How big is he? Okay. Nice! Ow! This guy just stabbed me. Nice! We've been re-rigging and Johnny literally just dropped down and caught one. Like, I've been re-rigging my giant nest that that last fish caused. That was fun to see. Yeah, he, uh, he yeah, him, he, yeah, like watching him come up to it, dude. And then he came right back towards it. Yeah, he spooked him for a second, then Johnny let it sit, and he came back. Woo! Did he jack yours up, too, like the last one jacked mine? Oh, that turd. Oh, yeah, bud! Sometimes I think less on your line is better. There's two thoughts to that, right? What do you mean? Uh, multiple multiple lures on your line. Oh yeah, yeah, no, there's times where it definitely, like, I've only, the only reason I started with multiple lures on our rigs was just because we didn't know what was gonna be yeah. working, and then also, you know, with the, uh, with the, uh, power bait, like I said, I kinda don't wanna do just power bait, cause I wanna have something with a little substance to call them in. You know, I don't want it just to be a chunk of power bait sitting there. F me. 
Another one? Yeah. I just need I don't know. Um, a tube and a trout magnet is what it's called. Look at it though, man. Hey! Hey yo! That little shake, dude. That's all it took. He's a little guy. Dude, I was just sitting there shaking that. Shaking it all the time. Yeah. Woo. Got him. Nice. Nice. Bigger one. Not a bigger one. Big. Oh, he just snapped me. You little punk. He ate the trout magnet. Hey everybody, I know this little chunk right here makes it a little bit of a longer video, but I wanted to go over some of the uh, things we did last night that I didn't get on video. We ran into some issues with the camera not working because it was really cold outside. Camera completely shut down, so there were some, some things that we missed, and I kind of wanted to give a summary of the steps, the four steps I take when I'm going to a new lake, really break it down. Last night, we took the, the four step approach that I always take when I'm going to a new lake. Step number one, as I discussed, got any information I could online. Um, again, Facebook groups, internet forums, always utilize that. Any information is good information. Step number two is find the mapping to locate either things that match up with the information you found online, or if there is no information online, just general structure so you kind of know the layout of the lake. You want to get those depth maps. If you don't have a fish finder, go online, search depth maps for such and such lake, such and such reservoir. Um, and again, it's not going to be super dead accurate, but it's going to give you an idea kind of on what that bottom structure looks like. Uh, real quick, I'm going to show you guys exactly what I found in that bay we were fishing. So when I came out there and I looked at my mapping, like I had said, uh, based off of looking at the topography around the reservoir, I could see on this side, right in here, that that was a gradual slope and you can see that continues into the lake with wider contour lines, just like that. Whereas on this side, I get those steep contour lines. Contour lines really close together. That tells me it drops off. We basically started over here, and we hiked out to here, and that's where we drill our first holes, right where it hit 40 feet of water. I knew it probably wasn't going to be 40 feet, just because we're in winter time, and I knew the reservoir was lower, and people were saying they were catching fish at like 20 to 35 feet. So I started off there. We weren't marking fish, and that's when we moved out of the bay to this main lake point out here and we hit some deeper water right off of this point. Again, I selected that because I had the ability to fish at different depths in a lot faster time. Whereas if I stayed over here where the contour lines are wide, I would have to travel quite a bit with my auger and drill holes pretty far apart. So you can look at this contour map and kind of make a game plan before you get out there fishing, and you can do the same thing on your computer before you get out there. Um, if you don't have a fish finder. But knowing that makeup, knowing roughly what's going on with the reservoir is super important. So after we did that second step of utilizing the maps, I immediately moved to step three, and that is what I had discussed earlier that we didn't capture on film, really finding the X on the lake, where we're going to fish, where we're going to set up, where we're going to locate all of our fish, and where we're going to spend the majority of our time fishing. Every day that's going to look a little different. It might mean you're moving around a lot all day. It might mean that you're sitting on fish, which basically is what worked out for us last night. We, you know, I go out to a spot and I start drilling holes looking for those things that I've identified earlier on the mapping and online. And utilizing my transducer, jaw jackers, and fishing different depths and really seeing, okay, is there fish here? And if there's not, it's time to move on. The number of people I see 
that go somewhere and they set up and just stay there when they're not catching anything is insane. Like it's staggering. Like tons of people just go out there and they go, I'm just going to drill a hole here, set up my tent and do all of that. Don't set up your tent first. I never, and I can actually say, I never, ever, ever go out and like just start unloading the sled and getting gear all over the place and like this is where I'm going to set up camp for the day. And I go out, I drill holes, I look at the fish finder, I try and catch a fish, I make sure I'm on fish. If you're not on fish, it's time to move. And generally I make an educated move, right? So last night I knew, okay, I'm in the middle area of the bay, I need to move out further, I want to go to the main lake point, try and access some of those fish that are in the main lake, right? They might not be pushing into this bay this time of year. So I'm going to push out a little further and identify that same structure, those same drop-offs. That worked out great last night. So just moving a little further worked awesome. Uh, I don't know why it's always moving further from the truck works for me. It sucks, but it usually does. We got out to that spot, that main lake point. Immediately I drilled a hole at, I think it was 41, 42 feet, marked a fish, got a fish to eat. Boom. Immediately better than that last spot. So I still wasn't ready to like set up the tent and go hog wild, right? It could be a one-off deal. It could be a one-off situation. So I told Johnny, hey, you fish here, man. Keep watching the fish finder. I'm going to go drill some holes in shallower like I had done earlier, kind of at different depths. Mark the same type of drop-off. I was, you know, had some holes at 20 feet, 30 feet, all the different depths. Pulled out the fish finder and within five minutes, I mean, we were marking fish left and right. There were fish all over. That told me, okay, there's fish here. I got one to eat. Now I'm going to really start moving to step four. I'm going to get the tent set up and we're going to set up shop here. Step number four is really dialing in the fish behavior and knowing which baits to throw. And I always, always, always start with confidence baits, whether that's fly fishing, ice fishing, bass fishing. You know, when you watch fishing tournaments uh, or anything like that, like, you know, if you watch the Bass Elite Series or MLF, the dudes number one and number two could be doing something completely different and they're still catching fish, right? So it's not just going to be what you find on a fishing report. I always start with confidence, baits I know how to work, baits I know how to fish, baits that I know are going to catch fish. Baits. So last night we got out there and I immediately went to what I've been catching fish with uh, on my guide trips at Echo and Rockport Reservoir. Rig number one was a white tube jig, just like that, right there. And behind it, you'll see, attached to that eye are two lines. I've got the line going all the way to my reel, and then I've got this dropper tag over here. It's getting wrapped up. And on that dropper tag, I do about 12 to 15 inches, and I put a tiny treble hook on there. This is a really good trout rig. It's a size 18 treble hook. I tip this with worm, little night crawlers, uh, and then on this, I just put garlic power bait. This is an awesome rig to fish dead stick, and the reason being is this is going to go, your tube jig is going to sink down, and that power bait's super buoyant. So it's actually going to float up above that tube jig. So your tube jig is going to be here, like I got in my right hand, and then up here is going to be your power bait up by my face. It's a rig that's relatively tough to be jigging and moving a whole lot. You can definitely do it, and I did last night. Um, but the issue with this rig, some of the things you have to watch for, um, are as that power bait gets soggy, it's going to start to sink. And it's going to start to end up below this, which isn't really a big problem. I've had fish eat it like that too. But where you run into issues with this rig, especially trout fishing, and this is a trout rig, the trout are going to be all throughout the water column, everywhere. So like last night, I'd have this sitting at, say, 20 feet of water. And I would mark a fish up at 10 feet of water. This power bait's sitting up above this jig. And if I wanted to reel up super fast to get to that trout's level, as I'm doing that, these lines are going to cross. And you can end up with a really big tangle. So you have to just be cognizant of that. You can't really move it super fast. Um, you kind of have to do that slowly. I tend to replace the power bait once I notice it's starting to get soggy. And I'm going to know it's doing that because I can actually watch it happen on my fish finder. So when you have it down there, you're going to see 
both you're going to see two lines marking your power bait and your jig. The power bait's not going to come back as hard of a return, so you know which one is which. You're going to have a hard return on your tube jib, tube jig, and then the lighter return is going to be that power bait. And all of a sudden, you're going to have these two lines. This is going to be your jig, your uh, tube jig down here. This is going to be your power bait. And all of a sudden, you're just going to see that power bait starting to slowly, just those lines are going to get closer together. And then sometimes it'll cross and that power bait will go down there, and that's totally fine as long as there's separation. But if you're fishing that and you've got your tube jig down here and your power bait here and you reel up to a fish really fast, it's going to cross, and then all of a sudden, when you stop moving it, those two lines aren't going to separate. Boom, you know, you've got a tangle, reel it back up, get it fixed, get it back down there. Um, so that's why I like to fish that on a dead stick. I don't like to move it too much. Um, but we caught fish on both the tube jig and the power bait last night. Uh, super confidence rig, and it worked great for us. It probably caught the most fish for us. I always, when I get out there, uh, here in Utah, we can legally fish with two rods. So I do that, and I have different setups on different rods. Uh, just to see if something's working better than the other. Johnny, my buddy that was out with me, he did the same thing. We were fishing different rigs, different different baits, to see if there's one thing they like more than the others. So the other rig I fished was... I've kind of moved these around because i got to go guide tomorrow, so they're not exactly set up like they were last night. Was this paddle bug right here. Again, another one of my confidence baits. Glow in the dark. I hit it with a glow just to see if glow happened to work better right? Experimentation, right? When I get out there, experimenting, glow versus non-glow, different profiles, things like that. I had that, caught some fish on that, and then below it, I had put a trout magnet, and this was an experiment. I had never fished with the trout magnets. I've always seen them, you know, I've heard great things about them, but I've just personally never fished them. So I trailed it with a smaller soft plastic. I had some relatively big body soft plastics, I had the power bait on the hook, so I wanted to see what I could do with a small soft plastic, get a little different profile, see if that really turned them on. Caught some fish on that too. None of these things really ended up being better than the others, um, but again, it just kind of shows you I'm experimenting with different profiles, different sizes. We did some different colors, caught them on different colors of the trout magnet. Same thing with the tube jigs. Use different colors um, just to see if anything would turn them on. It didn't really seem to make a huge difference last night. Um, so when you get out there, it's really a lot of experimentation. You really kind of want to try dead sticking. I go polar opposites a lot of times, right? So if I'm dead sticking and that's not catching fish, I'm generally going to go the polar opposite. I'm going to go, I'm going to hit them with a big, flashy, crazy spoon and fish really aggressively. If that doesn't work, I'm going to kind of go, okay, I'm going to go back to my soft plastics and maybe give those a little movement. Maybe I'm going to try different depths. It's just really experimentation to really fine tune that bait and the fish's attitude that day because there are days that they're going to act different, right? Some days they're going to eat aggressively, some days they're not. Even when we were out there, we ran into differences. When we popped in, you know, the first hour, the fish were going ballistic. They were basically eating anything we threw at them. Later on, we'd see them on the screen and they would see our stuff and they would kind of look at it but then spook off the second we moved it. Uh, so we had to start immediately making changes. That's where I started shaking my rod and I caught a fish doing that just just shaking it because it seemed like dead sticking they would lose interest and leave if we jigged it that would spook them and they would leave so I'm like well I'm going to try in between those two things I'm going to sit here and shake so to recap the four steps step number one use online information to your advantage go on Facebook groups go on internet forums use those resources because they're out there Step number two, utilize mapping to really pinpoint the areas you're looking for. Make a game plan based off of that map. Step number three, find the X. Go out there, that game plan you have, work through your options. Here's plan A, B, C, D. Go searching for those until one of them starts to work. You start marking fish. Step number four, get it dialed in with the baits. If you do those four things, you're generally going to have a pretty good time out there on the ice. So thanks for watching. Uh, we'll get some more videos coming out in the next week. Uh, go ahead and please subscribe. That helps a ton. And have a good time out there on the ice.